start to do some very important for people, you immediately will have resistance. We bring a lot of new uh, to United Nations. It's impossible for men to compete with women. One person can bring or can create the big mainstream, mainstream of changing. Good morning. Welcome to Thursday Conversations. Today, my honorable guest is Svetlana Salamatova, the initiator of Geopolitical Alliance of Women, head of the delegation to the 60th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. Special women, one of a kind. Thank you, Angelica, for the invitation and thank you for the opportunity to talk to people, especially for women in the world. It's a pleasure to host you here in Poland. How is the weather in Kyiv today? Uh, it seems like we have the same weather right now uh, in Ukraine and Poland. And I hope the similarity will bring to new relationship between our countries. Svidlana, you are empowering women around the world, not only in Ukraine, but also in many countries. You are ahead of the delegation to so important Commission of the Status of Women. Today I would like to learn more about your story, about your experience, about your passion, and share it with other women and empower other women. Could you tell me, and that's the first question, what is your holy grail of success? It's a very difficult question. At the same time, it's a very interesting question because I use this terminology very much when I talk with people and ask them to find this big and very important uh, glass from God to open life. But at the same time, it's very dangerous when you find uh, this stuff in open life because if you found it means that your life is close to the over uh, i like process i like to look in for something new i like to start from one dot and uh, i believe and i know that only one dot like one person can bring or can create the big mainstream mainstream of changing to people's life. Svidlana, you are empowering other women. What is your definition of modern leadership? And what is the difference between leadership of women and men's style of leadership? If you talk about uh, uh, classical understanding of leadership uh, between men and women, for me, it uh, doesn't matter. Who are you as a, as a leader? You are men or women? Uh, because leadership is everywhere, is leadership. Uh, leadership for me, it's uh, about uh, you are ahead and a lot of pe people behind you. Leadership is res responsibility, what way you choose for this big group of people who is behind you. A uh, leader is a person right now who don't think rationality. And according to uh, world or God wisdom, we should understand that white, perfect road is not very good for people. It's a very difficult choice for leadership. But now, after pandemic, after a crisis, economical crisis, and all bad things which we have for people, this way for humanity is the best way which we can even imagine for us. Dear Svetlana, the great result of the work of uh, Geopolitical Alliance of Women was also a letter, open letter, uh, to Secretary General of the United Nations. That was a great success. This letter was uh, concentrated on uh, not only on uh, empowering women, but also uh, to highlight that women can be a pacifying force, that we live in a very 
tough times. It was before the uh, pandemic uh, and before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So it's even more important nowadays than it was that uh, that time. Uh, but also uh, this letter consists on a very important phrase that we should promote, promote these leaders uh, who want to promote peace and understand between people, between cultures, religions, nations. You were the head of the delegation uh, to the Commission of the Status of Women. And uh, each year we take part in this important commission, which is dedicated to women, women empowerment, women leadership, but also which highlight the problems of women in many, many countries and societies around the world. Especially in these days, in these challenging times, uh, women are in a very bad situation in many, uh, many countries and these gaps between uh, uh, the countries are um, getting deeper and deeper. Why yeah. it's so important uh, that uh, our delegation uh, also have this vital voice uh, in the Commission and why it's so important to highlight and stress uh, the situation of so many women around the world, not only women leaders, but also these women um, and being the voice of these women who don't have any. Uh, thank you for this question. Yes, in the United Nations we uh, can find huge number of women who take a part in annual event. Four years ago, uh, we found 5,000 5, women from different countries in New York. In four years, this year, it, this year uh, regular session uh, was provided by online, we found 25,000 women. It's mean, and topic of this year was about women leadership and about uh, women, uh, wishes of women to take decision-making in own country. In our statement, we pointed about it very much because if uh, we allowed to, to make decision regularly like men do in each country, we will have really, really crisis, more crisis than we have right now. That's why our responsibility, my delegation, and our joint activity as a geopolitical alliance to bring new leadership, to raise women for And that's peace. the name of this joint, yes. our joint statement, yes. Women, Peace, Strategic Partnership. Yes, of course. Peace, very important. Because we are women, we are caring of next generation. And I never meet any women who are ready to burn child and send him to the war. I never meet these women. Maybe some number of women who are really cra crazy and really uh, strange as for me, because in nature we are women, we are caring of the life. We are the life, women for, for the life. And it is our responsibility to do joint action, to find this right action in dialogue and uh, uh, to join organi to organization, like to any group, to find this. Uh, first, we are should to look in for right decision, to look in for joint action and do this action. It's different, different uh, process of development. And for example, to uh, to wish, uh, 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 to want to be love, to be in love, and to be love. It's three different actions. Now time for women to start to be love, to look in for right decision. Next, to create this de decision, and next, to be decision. Our project and our geopolitical activity is about to be decision.
it to be indecision. To create process, uh, like I pointed before, it's it's one action. To create, uh, it's uh, you need uh, special special skills, special knowledge how to create process. To be in the process, you should uh, be very strong. You should understand how work uh, our uh, like world uh, world uh, law. I mean law. It is like God law. You need to understand not only how uh, work uh, spiritual uh, spiritual part of human life, how work rationality of part of li life, how work uh, everything in the, for next generation. You should know a lot and understand a lot. Now we are in this process, and next we move to be decision. When women start to be decision. It's like uh, it's uh, this process is, will be like even each woman meet in her life. Uh, for example, when beautiful, pretty women go on the street, and one man say said to her, "Hey, go with me." And very well educated, and uh, women who knows about herself a lot, it's enough for her to say no enough. Now time to women to learn subject how to say no. Very calm, very professional, but real key decision making started from no. It's why time for us, like Geopolitical Alliance of Women, sit on the table, open conversation, find right decision, make uh, a lot of mistakes, maybe together, maybe not, and to learn subject, no. How to say no people, um, which we call in regular life bad people, but in normal life there is no and good people. People are everywhere people. But one part, learn subject, how to say no, other part, no. I'm very excited about this conversation because uh, before we will start to talk about geopolitical alliance of women, uh, this project which, is, uh, which consists of many people, many women from different countries, nationalities, religions, skin color, uh, code, cultural codes. Uh, first, we will start to talk a little bit about this why it's so important to create a geopolitical alliance of women, why it's so important to create organizations which consist of women. Because there is this famous saying, if uh, they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. So I would like to ask you why this uh, a geopolitical alliance of women can be some metaphorical kind of uh, founding chair. Uh, for nowadays, uh, it's very important uh, to create new group which can work together and learn how to produce some product which bring additional values to society. Uh, as a result of main activity in the world, we have pandemia, we have wars, we have big conflicts between all countries, between Poland and Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia, between Russia and other countries. Who creates these conflicts? men or women. Look at the number of people in each parliament of the countries. We can find 80% of men and only 20% of women. What does it mean for country and for geopolitical situation? It means that uh, in key level decision-making level, men who has nature of thinking, rationality thinking, uh, look, uh, look in their regular life. When men sit to together, like group of men sit together, what kind of con conversation creates this group? This group talk about money 
about economical situation, about business, about all rational things. When women sit on the table, what kind of conversation we women bring to people or for us? We talk about children, we talk about uh, uh, our home, we talk about society, we talk about people about social problems about not only about social mm -hmm. process through open problem we touch very important social things and this type of conversation are very important for women and that time of conversation with create men are very important for them why we don't sing together because when we bring now time to sit to one table men and women and create a new type of conversation men should bring to the table rationality, money, financial sector, justice system, and women should bring social thinking, people. Let's uh, uh, look uh, what kind of uh, uh, decision, uh, decision bring each parliament to the people in their own country. This decisions very rare touch people i don't believe that if we will have only women's parliament like 100 but it's women, also not a goal of course we will bring uh, what what i found when women together start to uh, make uh, decisions they forgot about money they forgot about economical issues and they talk about only how to help people but they don't understand from what uh, they should to bring money. Of course, it's generalization, but it's uh, it shows some important aspects which you mentioned, which you highlighted already in the past. As I remember that we should find a way to have a real open dialogue between um, men and men and women. And of course, um, we will talk about this later. But geopolitical alliance of women mm -hmm. consists of many women experts from many fields economists, uh, lawyers, women who are rational thinking, who are emotional at the same time in this uh, right way of, uh, of thinking. I think that being emotional in terms of being sensible for others, uh, have this uh, empathy and understanding is so important nowadays when we talk about uh, modern leadership, which should consist of uh, rational thinking and of course uh, mm, uh, this economical aspects and understanding what leadership is so effectiveness but at the same time uh, we should more concentrate on people we should more concentrate on social impact that's what the sustainable development goals un goals the global goals are about so if we want to have this modern leadership we need to see these two aspects of ourselves both men and women that we have uh, we are both sensible if we if we develop this and we can have empathy and understanding how our actions create reactions but at the same time to be reasonable and find a way to uh, to lead properly and effectively, right? I am totally agree with you, Angelica. And what I, I want to add a little bit, uh, women uh, should understand right now, for nowadays, after pandemia and after what happened in the world, uh, now we will start to play a very special role uh, for people and uh, now we have to be leaders in the world if you think about survive of world that's why now god is closer to uh, uh to people and god special had special uh special mission for women in the world uh, because uh, i think that uh, if we talk about uh, women or men leadership I don't like this type of conversation. Oh, for yes, sure. that was a provocation, yeah. of course. It's because provocation. We talk about this yes. several times. Yes. And I remember when we had a panel discussion in the past, uh, when I told that uh, for me the success will start when during the panel discussions on the forums, big international forums, will not ask the question 
uh, why women leadership is important. That should be so obvious. For me, it's so obvious that we should treat each other equally and at the same uh, level, and we should only uh, look at the aspects of our professional profile and our experience. Of course, that was a provocation, uh, uh, because if we will start to answer this question, uh, that's obvious. You can ask this question. I don't afraid your questions. I love your questions very much. Uh, but I want to add that uh, uh, it's impossible for men to compete with women. We, Angelica, now create uh, uh, open space for each woman who wants to be leader, who is leader. Svidlana, I would like to ask you about your experience and tell a little bit about your story, uh, about your achievements. If you could tell, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, your past experience, your work, about the organizations which you created, about the achievements, wonderful achievements, which are not so well known as I think that we all wish to, because it's a great inspiration for other women, but not only for women, for all the leaders who are leading international organizations and are facing so many challenges connected with this international environment, uh, distance, uh, different cultures, uh, languages, uh, religions. So you could, you could tell us more about your mm -hmm. background. I would be very um, grateful to you. Seven years, years ago, I started to work with women suddenly. And it was very interesting reaction from my business partners, who mostly was uh, were men. This is Svetlana. You something happened with you? Why? And we started to work uh, with a small group of women. We started to help one woman. We started only from one. Um, this project called Renaissance of Women, because uh, I found that women, uh, women something happened with women they start to be very weak like inside each woman we found small small girl it's not enough for modern society we should to grow up this little girl inside yourself uh, like raise a little bit and to be the same side with modern world we started to raise one woman uh, this project uh, was uh, holding on one year and we had nine heroines, because it was really a heroine, a lady who uh, came to the group and talked about your life honestly. Uh, we used uh, real like TUP technology, it's strategic, participatory strategic planning, which I use regularly in, for uh, developing organization and businesses. Uh, it's this project was raised really power for other women because our uh, project started from one then uh, this group raised to 20 then the 20 started to work together with other uh, women and next uh, this ex this movement uh, bring new project it's called forum of women pa partnership and Forum of Women Partnership bring uh, 2,000 women in one room. And this one day event bring 11 new working group and 11 new projects. And seven projects uh, uh, working without me during two years. And that action bring project which called uh, Ukrainian women uh, in the United Nations. And uh, during four years, uh, we in Ukraine formed independent, non-government uh, delegation of women who are leaders in Ukraine. We came to the United Nations to regular annual session to commission of status of women. Uh, we create statements, special statement. We send special statement from Ukrainian women to general secretary each year. Uh, we bring a lot of new uh, to, to United Nations. This project and this activity bring forum which called Open Great, Great Open Dialogue in Monaco, which uh, is going to be on next year, 
in Monaco. And this event in our plan. We want to create 80 teams, high level people who work in key decision making, high level level uh, key decision making, 80 teams from 80 countries in one room. And uh, we mixed uh, this delegation into this big room in the Grimaldi Forum. And we will ask only one question, what we can do together to keep balance in the world. And our acceptation or our, our wish as a result of this two days dialogue, we will have new thinking, new leadership. This forum will be also a result of many years of working on the Seven projects. Seven years. Exactly. So I would like to ask you, because you are a special woman for Ukraine, you do a lot for your country, for the women, for the leadership um, uh, skills of those who are leading uh, as well. I would like to ask you, uh, how did you came with the idea of uh, geopolitical uh, alliance yeah. of women? Uh, each idea came in a very simple way. Somebody call you, and in this dialogue and conversation with open heart, each dialogue with open heart creates new ideas, good ideas, very useful ideas for, for people. And one day, one lady from Georgia called to me and asked me about, uh, Svetlana, talk me about your project uh, which you provide in the United Nations. We started to talk and suddenly I understand that it's time to create new geopolitical alliance. I think that in this place it's also important to highlight, stress out, that uh, geopolitical alliance of women is not political alliance of women, which means that all the women involved are representing civic society, they are humanitarians, uh, act social activists, and their goal, their main goal and purpose is to promote peace, understanding between the nations, mostly between the people, uh, create alliances, uh, geopolitical um, cooperation, but also cooperation on the level between people, between women, and uh, this uh, result uh, of the work of the Geopolitical Alliance of Women. Um, open letter to Secretary General to United Nations was also a great success. Geopolitical, it mean, geo, it mean, uh, global world. And political, it doesn't mean political party. It mean about policy, about key decision making. Certainly, certainly. And women can be a pacifying force. Yes, yes. We have to be leaders right now in the world. And don't afraid to do it. Because if you have love, you have everything. And people right now, it, even you know, you know, Angelica, that uh, even uh, we have economical uh, index like index of happiness. And who creates this index? Men. And uh, I know this man personally. He never asks women. What does it mean, happiness? We just finished the 60th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. I think that it was uh, a great success. What are your thoughts about, uh, about the sessions, uh, about uh, that important time for all our delegation and the results of our work, international I have, work? I have a big list of our achievements right now. I love this result when I, when I see the dynamic of development of the project. Four years ago, our delegation consists only from Ukrainian women. And in four years, our delegation consists from representative uh, from Poland. It's you, Angelika. Thank you very much for your trust, for your energy, for your additional values to our delegation and for promotion of our delegation in the world. Uh, this year we have lady from Belarus. It's very important also right now through the geopolitical triangle which we have in this area, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, and Poland. It's very important. Uh, we have uh, uh, ladies from Georgia also in our delegation. In my goal, uh, next, in couple, uh, next year, we will have a real international delegation. 
Unfortunately, we can bring only 20 women to the Commission of Status of Women as a delegation, not more. But I see how we raise themselves in this activity, how we start to be strong, how we start to believe what we do, how ladies start to uh, be open to the world. Four years ago, it was very difficult to find this uh, power. Now we have power. We and have power in Ukraine. We have power influence to the Europe. And now I got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, ask personally to me as a leader of this organization from different countries. And now. Uh, strong leaders from different countries ask uh, uh, or promote me as a good leader in Ukraine. Everybody recommended to me to work with me. Exactly. And I think that it was a great responsibility which we felt during this time. I know that we were afraid, Angelica, this resp yes, responsibility. But we were the only one from this part of Europe who took part in the sessions of the Commission on the Status of Women so extremely important decision-making, key decision-making uh, commissions. Uh, unfortunately, of course, now during the COVID-19 era, we are not gathering so often as we used to do, but just uh, here we can see uh, <laughs> one of the press conferences in the Ukraine, Ukraine Forum uh, in Kyiv. It was exactly two years ago when we took part in this important a press conference which was spread it worldwide. Angelica, even uh, you will see dynamic of, de of my personal development. Uh, now I look so more better than before. And oh, this certainly. is, uh, yes, this yes. is uh, because uh, the time when you stay, and I want to say each woman in the world, if you start to do some very important for people, you immediately will have resistance from other people, from other organizations, from colleagues, from everyone. And that time uh, you see my face, it was, I was uh, working under the real pressure. It was not easy oh, to I create remember the section. how it was yeah, when it we was were very almost difficult. not sleeping, yeah. uh, just working yes. all the time. Yes. Uh, and uh, it seems like, for me, it was uh, like time when uh, elephants stay, uh, stay on you and uh, don't move uh, uh, from your body. Uh, but this section raised you very much. And if you know, I want a point pointed one more time. If you have love inside you, if you love people, it's very difficult to love people. It's very difficult to love people who pressure you, but I love them very much. I understand that this type of people bring the best in your life. And this is uh, this May of May of 30 in Ukraine. And you see Angelica, Angelica came to Ukraine and we declare together, announce, make, announce uh, about geopolitical alliance of women as an idea. It was only an idea. But since that time we did an uh, enormous amount of work and so many uh, gatherings, international meetings, taking part every year uh, uh, in the session of the Commission of the, on the Status of Women, uh, but also this international work, joint statement, uh, open letter to Secretary General, which was so warmly welcomed, and many other activities. But it's also important to mention that in this press conference, which we see, uh, there were also a Syrian uh, representative, uh, so women from many different places around the world, but places also affected, um, um, affected by war, affected by uh, hard, hard history ex experience. Where women leaders are so extremely important these days, women as a pacifying force, because that's also our role to create more sustainable, more open. Uh, welcoming word for this younger people yes, of uh, who are now a future. Which covered only one world. Angelica. Children are the Peace. living messages which we send to the time we will not see. I think that it's very, very important and especially women leaders understand this because we are also so strongly dedicated to the relations. We want to see that this environment around us is uh, welcoming environment, good environment, which creates good energy. 
what is more important these days when the world is challenging, facing such a hard situation. Yes, and I proud that uh, do you remember that two years ago you got special uh, special diplomas uh, in this uh, in my press conference. That was my greatest honor. I was so moved. And something attached. changed in your life also. Oh yes, a lot. That was uh, that was so beautiful that my work was noticed, understood. Uh, we are both coming from humanitarian environment. Uh, uh, despite of our um, activities and work, we always find a time for this humanitarian work, which started to be our life and our mission. So uh, you know exactly how hard it is to uh, to always find a way to help, even when uh, the environment is not uh, easy or when it's not so uh, uh, so political to say about the humanitarian crisis, about humanitarian problems, about the societies which uh, so often are not remembered and they are in tough uh, um, tough situation. Especially with anti-landmine campaign, which is so close to my heart and which we discuss so often, so frequently, to find a way to find solutions. It's so hard because very often these people are not remembered, they need uh, strong support after they are maimed by a landmine, they need uh, constant assistance and we want to be the voice of those who don't have any. It's so important for us, it's so important for you as well. And now we have not less than 60 strong women from different countries who work together with us who will promote and who will share your peace, uh, uh, peace activity in the world. And at the same time, I've got from you so many help is possible to have for normal life or for abnormal life. I don't know. But anyway, what I want to say, try to say, I try to say that when women start to work together, create real partnership, like we do right now here in Warsaw. Uh, we are sitting and planning what we can do together the better way. That right is now. a strategic planning yes. because we are not thinking only what will happen yes. next year. We are thinking for the next five for years long, and yeah, more. Not less. And we are using our contacts uh, around the world to do the right things, which is so uh, such a great, uh, strong power these days. Uh, sometimes I'm amazed how much these women uh, did around the world and how now they bring this, this good message of our activities to other places. So now we are uh, naturally uh, leading to our next topic, which is uh, Open Dialogue Forum, Monaco Forum, uh, something wonderful, a beautiful initiative, which I'm very excited about, uh, which is now under the preparation, very intensive work is, uh, is uh, waiting for us in coming months. Could you tell us more about the Open Monaco Forum? Uh, before I, I answer your question, I, uh, I want to say it's a couple of words about the Geopolitical Alliance of Women edi additionally. Uh, I want to ask uh, or invite each woman who are listening to us right now and see and watch on TV. Uh, you can only send message to Facebook, our Facebook page and uh, write Svetlana, I want to be part of your activity or Geopolit, I want to be part of your women's group, you're welcome. I hope that this space uh, will survive for next generation. Open Dialogue is only one project which came from Geopolitical Alliance of Women. It's first big project, geopolitical project. Internal of Ukraine we have a lot of activity. Uh, we have uh, place for, for women who uh, work professionally with social environment, who work with uh, level political, political uh, decision uh, for deputies, for everyone. We have space for, for women who are uh, keeping culture 
traditional culture and today you see I'm, I'm wearing a very special traditional Ukrainian dress. I promote Ukraine also culture. And I have a flower which uh, we can yes. see right now. In the <laughs> and video. this flower is a symbol of uh, our independent delegation to United Nations. And when we bring this flower and came to New York on the streets, everybody paid attention. And this flower helped us to win big competition internal uh, in uh, United Nations between delegation from all countries when our. Uh, when our delegation take off flower from uh, jacket and hand uh, race with flower, we that won. That is uh, handmade, we won. beautiful yes, handmade, handmade by Ukrainian women. It's Ukrainian old women, very, very unprofessional women. She produced this flower and this is symbol of our I delegation. think that it's also the best uh, part of the pie that we can always show the culture on this United Nations events. I, uh, I love it a lot that we can show our, our places which we came from, uh, which we are proud of. It's so beautiful to see all this delegation from different parts of the world, women who look totally different and they, they are so proud to show their culture, to show a little uh, a piece of their life and their place where they are living. Uh, it's always uh, so enriching when we are all gathered together and discussing and showing uh, they are different, Angelica, but at the same time, they, uh, they, we have the same problem and we found it. Uh, we provide parallel event, do you remember? Uh, Certainly. Yes, and uh, what we found, 60 minutes parallel event and good conversation between nine countries which were involved in, in our parallel event. Uh, and uh, in 60 minutes, uh, using professional technology of uh, for facilitation, uh, we have sev seven statements, like seven statements for women, seven recommendations, and we publish this seven uh, seven recommendation on our pa Facebook page, and you can find it. But the main recommendation came from men who was involved in this parallel event. He said that women, you should remember that each man has a very important one woman in his life. It's mother <laughs> and work with mothers and you will have success and we do. Um, it's also very nice to, to mention that uh, uh, open dialogue but also open organization. In this organization um, there are so many women from different fields, from different countries, from different business fields but it's always so surprising as I remember uh, the reactions of the observers of our group so surprising that these women which you gather together uh, in your group in our delegation of 20 women um, when we took part in the United Nations uh, sessions in the Commission those are the women so skilled so um, so experienced, uh, the women from Ukraine are representing top level positions. Uh, they are on the top level positions in the organizations or they created uh, very big businesses or they are leading, yes. uh, they have leading role in uh, civic in society or government. Fields, yes, in yes. Different, different spheres. And but all of them are extremely yeah. achievements, so they can also, they do in practice, you do this in practice because you are a very down to earth person, in a good meaning. You are a dreamer, but at the same time you gather together a women who are very strong Strong, very experienced and they they are a real, real role model and they offer a mentorship for other women who are coming to the organization so it's also so unique in this uh, geopolitical alliance of women that these women are so experienced that they can share their experience uh, they want to create something additional together but they are so uh, maternal in their work they are so experienced uh, it's not easy to find another organization which have such a unique leaders gathering together. That's why I think it's such a success for the organization and success for these commissions as well, uh, that we can uh, present the point of view of many women from different spheres, from different uh, economic uh, sectors or governmental sectors or civic society sectors. 
Thank you, Angelica. And yes, I like to work with diversity. Everybody declare that diversity is very important, but nobody, everybody afraid of this diversity. Nobody understand how to work with diversity. How, how is possible to bring to uh, one organization women from different, professional women and leaders from different sphere? What I heard from my, my uh, women sometimes, uh, when we came to this group, uh, we thought, what I can bring to this group? It is not my, my regular life. It's, I don't understand uh, these women. I never, I afraid this, this type of women before. I never touched these women. But now they enjoy your life with this activity because I know secret. And it's not secret for this interview, but I know the secret. And uh, it's very fun to work with diversity. It's very fun because in diversity, uh, um, it's like puzzle. You understand? You like to play puzzle. I don't like to, yes, to play chess. I don't like chess because when you play chess, it's a very intelligent uh, uh, game, but as a result of the, this game, very prognosis. It's not win-win, right? Yes, of course. It's not win-win. And win. puzzle, you, you bring like each of us small pieces of whole picture. Mm -hmm. And if you can understand how to uh, match these women together, you will have success. I think that it's so wonderful that every day we contact with uh, so many people, of course with women, from a uh, different part of the world. We start the day with uh, conversations with uh, um, our Asian representatives, uh, then we finish the day with Los Angeles and United States and Canada. Um, during this time there is also Africa where the time is the same. Uh, so And Europe, of course, with small differences of the time zones. So it's fascinating that at one day we connect with so many people with, with different point of view, different environments, Environments, different uh, abilities, uh, different uh, um, economical, social environments. It brings so much additional value to our organization. And I think that there is a great value in this because uh, as, as it is said that when you are traveling, you have different lives. When you are reading a book, you have different life. So I believe that if you work with people from other cultures, nationalities, religions, um, different sectors, you also have a few lives in one because you experience much more. You are not closed in your, in your bubble. You are open for the div diversity of this world, which is bringing so much additional value. Yes. And that's the future leadership, I think. If you open to the world, a world, will open Ever. for you. Very kind and to you and work, work, work for you. And what I want to uh, add, uh, I have a dream. Next year, all nations came to Monaco Open Dialogue. And I know that result of this dialogue to answer for only one question, what we can do together to keep balance in the world, bring a new world to the world. I know it for sure. It, why I have success, one of the answers of my success, because I don't believe in it. I know it. And also just leaders knows because you're already yes, of course. You have already <laughs> confirmation of so many important personalities, leaders, role models who already accepted uh, the invitation and they want to come to the Monaco for the Open Dialogue Forum. They want to share their views. They want to work in group because it's also a unique concept to yes, work yeah. together. Uh, it's more close to United Nations work and this idea of uh, um, climate, uh, climate action, for example, when the leaders gather to, together and they discuss what we can do when the clock is ticking so uh, so fast. So let's let's do this. I hope, I believe, I know that hey, the open dialogue will I know be a great you know. success. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and could you imagine, Angelica, and to everybody who watch us, how it's possible to bring in one room 
royal families, a representative of local elites, financial sector, a lawyer, lawyer sector, big, small and middle business, civic society, big association, small association and people with disability. We are going to bring this type of people to one room, mixed and looking for a right decision. And that we is will find. a real modern leadership that people from different sectors, from different positions are listening to each other in this world when there is such a lack of listening, when we don't listen to each other carefully, when we don't hear. Yes. Uh, open dialogue is mostly a conversation with. So I believe that it will be a great conversation between people who usually don't talk to each other, who usually don't work together on one, one joint plan for us. I believe that it will be a great Angelica. success. And you know a lot of international organizations and uh, me knows a lot of organizational committees who organize a lot of big and small international events. Everybody understand values of diversity. Everybody understand that it's time to open door for diversity and to bring this type of people to the room. But what we are different from others? We are not afraid. We do it. I know that uh, these uh, two days of open dialogue will be not easy for people. Like you said, that it's very difficult to listen to each other. But it's worse to do it right now. And we have to do it. And our organization committee, committee, which you are part of this action right now, thank you very much for your support and for your a uh, real, uh, real understanding of what we do. We will do it and we will start and you will see all international organization committee will follow us because we are leaders in this process. We don't afraid, we understand consciously what we do. Svidlana, I'm extremely grateful to you, deeply grateful to you for this conversation. And I believe that together we will create a word of understanding, a word of peace. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Angelica.